Hi, this is Chris from Essential SQL. Today we're going to go over combining Boolean operators. I think it's important to understand that Boolean operators such as AND and OR are evaluated in a, a specific order, much like in math, um, multiplication and addition are evaluated. So an AND clause is evaluated before an OR clause. This is analogous to um, multiplication being um, calculated before we do an addition. Um, as you know, if I was to type um, 3 times 5 plus 2, that would be 17 because it's 3 times 5, which is 15, plus 2. But we can use parentheses to kind of alter the result. So it was 3 times 5 plus the quantity, or three times the quantity five plus two, then that would be 21, right? Because it's three times seven, which is 21. So much how we can use parentheses to alter the outcome of a mathematical expression, we can use them to alter how our Boolean expressions behave. I think example is in order. So let's take this example here where we are looking for all customers who are owners. Now again, let's say we want to look for the customers who are not owners. If I do where not contact title equals CEO, let's just copy this in here and see what happens. I think we're going to find that I get all the owners, the directors, installers, the purchasers, and not the CEO. But really what I was looking for is I wanted, I didn't want any owners. So I don't want to see any owners in here, right? So what I, what I really need to do is I need to fix my, uh, query so that the not is applying to everything. And I think really the best way to make it readable is to use the parenthesis where I can say not contact title equals CEO. And then if I put a parenthesis at the end here, then really what we're saying is, is let's evaluate all this together and if any of this is true when I paste this in and run it you can see we only get the directors of installations the um, installers and the purchasers and again the reason is is that when we evaluate our statement if this uh, um, evaluates the true meaning any of these are, you know, CEO, owner, or president, the not statement then, of course, reverses that to a false, and those records aren't included in our result. And that's how we exclude the owners from our search. So let me pull up the um, comprehensive example and talk through that. Um, suppose that we were looking to find all the large orders, and we considered a large order to be quantity greater than 100 and the unit price greater than 10. And then we also wanted to sort these by the total price. You know, how would we go about this? Well, here you can see the query I wrote. Let's grab the order detail ID, the unit price, the quantity, the uh, total price, which would be the unit price times quantity from the order details. And then we're going to say that the unit price is greater than 10 or the quantity is greater than 100. So let's copy this in and uh, run it. And you can see here that all the quantities are, are greater than 10 and where um, where they're not greater than 10, the unit, the unit price is greater than 10. So it's an it's a either or proposition. One or the other has to satisfy our um, our query. So one thing that you could do here is to say, well, you know, I really want orders that are um, of this size, but let's also check the total price and make sure that the total price is greater than a thousand. So you see here, there's this line here where the quantity was greater than ten, but it was a real small um, unit price, so it's only 152 bucks. We truly want big orders, so let's just only. Uh, also allow orders that are greater than a thousand. So what I can do is then write another line here that says and total price greater than 
greater than a thousand. Now let's copy this in. See what happens. And here you can see that it brings in all the um, items where the total price is greater than a thousand. All right, so I wanted to show you something here. I I switched around the quantity and unit price terms, so the query is slightly different. Now it says where quantity is greater than a thousand or unit price is greater than ten. Well, I'd actually just kind of reverse those, and I ran the query. And what I wanted to show you is is that now the result is completely different. As you can see here, now it's bringing back a total price of uh, 152. You're like, why is that? I, I said total price should be greater than a thousand. Well, here's what's happening. Remember, the and gets evaluated before the or. So what we're really saying here is, is that if the unit price is greater than 10 and the total price is greater than a thousand, include the record. That's great. So that's where you get all these large number records to include. We're also saying or if the quantity is greater than 100, also include it. See this quantity is greater than 110. So it got included because this or gets evaluated last. So here's a really good case to where you, you'd want to use parentheses. I also think it's a good case to use parentheses um, just to be clear and sure. Because you could be really good at the Boolean algebra and understand the precedence and go, oh, you know, I'm offset because I'm going to use this first case here and I know that everything's ordered correctly. And so the way it's going to um, evaluate, I know it's correct. But what happens like two months down the road if you make a change and you forget about that? And now your code slightly behaves differently. I think really in this case is where it's best to use the parentheses to be really explicit about what you really are intending to have be evaluated first. So to do this, let's bring back our little handy text editor here. It's quite easy. All we need to do is to add parentheses and lovingly surround our OR clause with them. So now what we're saying here is that we are intending the quantity to be either greater than 100 or the unit price to be greater than 10. And then once that's passed, also ensure that the total price is greater than 1,000. I think you're going to find that this query here performs just swimmingly in our database. And here, oh my lord, it's back. What did I do? Oh, I pasted in the wrong one. Silly me. So let's copy this again, and now I need to copy it. And now let's paste it in. I am so confused because my um, parentheses aren't showing up. Oh, they're not here. Duh. All right, so let's put the parentheses in. There we go. And now copy it. I'm going to run that one. All right, now let's copy this one in. There we go. There's my parentheses. All right, now it should work. So this 152, that's been vexing us all this time because I don't really know how to edit, I guess, uh, should work. All right. So now, here we go. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this tutorial on how to use the SQL uh, conditions with uh, or clause and clause parentheses. Really appreciate you hanging in there. I hope um, you get a lot out of this. Please ask me questions. My Twitter handle is SQLChris or on my blog you can leave a comment. Or you can email me at chris at essentialsql.com. Love to hear your thoughts and how to make this better so that uh, you can become awesome at SQL. Thanks, bye.